Well, now let's take a look at assets. Uh, as you can see, I um, set a pretty simple scene with a simple ground and two little sphere assets, both in one sphere layer. Okay, so how that works. Here you have in the first asset tab an asset lister which will list all the assets uh, from the selected layer. Simple. Um, let's take uh, a look at uh, what we can do with that. You have the first icon here, which is uh, simple to locate it and identify um, your asset. So you just can click here and it will select in the viewport your asset. can be helpful if you have a lot of assets and don't remember which one is. Um, so assets are already created. About modification, uh, here when you move an asset, as I said, prefer be careful to well select the controller or directly select here to move uh, in the viewport this asset. Here it just in fact uh, the 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 pre, pre visualization uh, where is your asset and you can do some modification on it. So be careful to do the complex modification before to create asset, but you can still do that. You can't uh, do modification at transform level. If I select my sphere and move or scale, nothing happen here, okay? Um, but you can edit in component level. For example, if I select all the vertex of my sphere, now I will be able to do modification, scale, okay? So you still can edit your asset after. So it's a, it's a possibility, but um, the cleanest way to modify an asset in terms of transform is to use directly the Envit transformation. Why? Because of that, um, all the proxy, the template will follow correctly uh, the value. If you do modification here directly, uh, that will not uh, follow by uh, proxy uh, and template we will uh, show later. So it's possible, but it's not the best way to do it. Then, as we saw before, all the assets from this layer will be affected uh, by the setting. For example, global scale. If I scale up, all the sphere will be scaled at the same value. Okay. It's why you have an asset attribute by clicking on the name of the asset. For example, I would like to just scale my uh, blue sphere. So I go to blue sphere and I click. And here you have the um, asset attribute that will pop up. Um, so first thing, you have a little viewport to inspect your asset to identify which one it's. Okay, it's, it's the right one. Um, some little uh, quick uh, viewport uh, attribute to um, focus on. Um, I or show the head um, display, the the mode you want, texture, wireframe, pretty simple, light on off. Okay, here you have some information about your asset, its name, sphere blue, same as here, and an ID that can help for future um, feature. Here um, it's for controller color and template color, and you have some attributes here, the scale and here, yeah, if I scale this time, that will scale only my blue sphere. Okay. Same thing, you have uh, offset here. If I want to offset, it's in centimeter, so that will depend on the, the scale of your scene, of course. Let's say 10 maybe. Hit enter each time to validate. Okay, and now I have a proper 10 offset on my surface. And last one is probability. Uh, here we are, we are uh, half same number or green and blue, but if I want only 50% of blue, okay, that will change that. Let's say only 10%, great. So you have this control at um, asset in layer, but you understand you are a bit limited, okay? It's just uh, to, to finalize your your layer, inside your layer, but if you want to go to more in-depth, uh, use layer.
okay, for more control and full, uh, full control of everything. Then, um, about shading, for example, I have my blue sphere. Um, you have different options. You can simply uh, come here and as a simple mesh, you can uh, go to your attribute, etc. I give you a little quick access uh, just here. Okay, uh, my blue sphere, you have this uh, blue button, you come here, you click, and in attribute that will open you the shader uh, effect to this asset directly on attribute editor. Okay, pretty simple, you can directly modify the shader here. So here it's a quick access. You can also, for example, if you want to change uh, the shader to another one, uh, here the right click and um, the problem is the right click don't work correctly on this little viewport. So you can select here, but if you want, you just right click on the main viewport. And now, for example, I can create a new uh, Arnold shader and then say uh, a red, red one. Perfect. Okay. So yes, you can select here, but uh, right click on the main viewport. Okay. So we will use a more complex asset. I will use this uh, simple grass one from um, Quicksand Megascan with a texture. I create a new layer. Let's rename it and create. Okay. Now I'm in my new layer. I will uh, hide this one just by clicking on this icon on Sphere. Uh, so for now, it's empty. I select uh, my grass. So one mesh, one shader. It's okay. Click on Add Asset. Keep uh, the name. Keep um, everything by default for now. You can change, if you want, the color of the controller. Create. Okay. So now... Now my grass is here, perfect. I will just add uh, more grass in distrib distribution. Okay. Well, here my grass is a more complex asset with uh, some uh, polygons. Um, as we uh, saw, it's not a problem to have an heavy uh, polygon asset for renderer, but um, it's more a problem uh, for the viewport. Not really a problem, but you will see your frame rate uh, really slow down. Okay, it's normal. A viewport is just for preview. It's not to, the idea is not to support uh, all the instances. It's why, of course, uh, in Envit, you have uh, some feature for that. You don't need to display all your instance uh, on the viewport. So. In asset, you have the viewport display, which, uh, as uh, its name, uh, will uh, display only some uh, number of assets. Let's say only 10% of my grass will be okay, and now my frame rate is free. And when you will hit render, of course, we will have everything uh, render correctly, and you can keep it at 10%. It's um, the first solution for optimization. Um, the thing with viewport display, it's one more time that will affect all your assets in the list, which is not really a, a problem. Uh, there is a second solution, which is to use um, what I call the template or proxy or LOD display as you want. For that, you go to the asset attribute and here you have the viewport feature. We are set on uh, asset for now, which means each instance will be fully displayed with texture, all polycount, your asset, no problem. But you can use a template. I will use one, just click on here. And now it will use a simplified version uh, just for you to locate it uh, where it plays in the viewport, etc. And my frame rate now is good. It's a great alternative if you want to keep control on uh, um, where each asset are located in a in a full uh, number. Uh, yes, okay. Uh, template. You can choose between between uh, three one. 
the con one plane one plane is a more optimized wine because it's only a one face so that will be the quicker one on frame rate the best if you have a lot of uh, asset and a three one which is interesting if you want to to look at um, uh, uh, yes more precisely the, the position of your asset okay as you notice it's uh, blue in fact it takes the color you have here this color is for the controller and the shading of your template so if you want something more like a grass uh, you can just change the color here and of course when you will hit render that will display your grass instead of uh, this tree you have also the diagnostic sphere which is um, the one we already saw at the beginning okay when you don't have uh, it also can be uh, really uh, smooth for the viewport and here's the value for the, the radius of this one and disable that will fully disable the display of everything so come back to asset okay so here on this uh, specific asset i will open the shader so for that you can also use the quick access i will have my shader here and if you have your hyper shade open and uh, selected when you will click to the quick shader access button it will automatically display in attribute editor plus show you uh, the graph of the shader here in hyper shade and as you can see i use an opacity map here for the grass okay for the for cut the grass thinner so how to deal with that as you know uh, with Arnold when you deal with opacity you have to go to your mesh Arnold and uncheck the opaque in order that opacity works correctly it's not an, uh, necessary to made it here because when you load uh, your original mesh into Envit it will override this attribute by default Envit will load any asset with opaque check off okay to avoid any problem uh, if you load a rocks or something without any opacity uh, it can be interesting to come to your asset and check opaque okay uh, maybe for performance issue or thing like that same thing for subdivision uh, that will not take in count uh, the subdivision you can set here because it's override by uh, it here the one uh, which uh, count is here the subdivision and the opacity here well, so now I will set viewport display lower and my template as a okay. Then I will go here and made a render. I will hit uh, Arnold IPR. Uh, something uh, you should know is the first time you launch my Arnold, it should load. Um, every by first uh, module uh, component so it will take some time but the next uh, launch will be uh, quicker to load well about animation in the uh, main time i want to focus on it on a steel frame but i still give you the ability to load some animation on your asset there is no wind or thing like that for now but uh, you still can't uh, use animation on your asset here I, on my grass i uh, create with the deformer a little animation um, things to freeze uh, your transform correctly um, i will select my, gra my grass only not the deformer and create i will rename grass animated now um, as you know you can set here at the creation uh, your display viewport display uh, if it's uh, a navy mesh uh, to don't slow down your viewport at the creation you can set it to tem template uh, for the creation i will keep it as mesh and if you want animation ju just check animation checkbox here you have to um, set a catch paths because uh, that will use uh, cache for animation and a start end frame it's not the start end of your time range timeline but on your uh, asset animation in order to loop then so i will set it to 40 then you create 
Uh, here, I already have a cache for it, so I will replace existing. Okay. So waiting for Envy to create the asset. And we have animation here on your asset, even in the viewport. Okay. Uh, then last thing about that, you can go to your asset attribute uh, and here on the bottom you have this little icon which is activated if you have animation on your asset. You click on it and it will open, use uh, the catch attribute okay, uh, to have access or enable, you can reverse, oscillate, a lot of multi-thread uh, and here set, uh, set things for looping, for example, if I come to here, after it will continue and loop all the time. Okay, so for now it's pretty simple, I know, but uh, on future updates, I will add um, offset variation and things like that. But for now, you can still do some great thing by creating, for example, three different animated graphs that will keep you enough of uh, variation, I think, uh, to have a great effect. Also, you may have noticed Envid use a lot of set to works, but that can quickly saturate your outliner. Uh, as you can see here, I have more sets than objects. So here is uh, tips on how to hide them. You go to show, object, and you selected sets. Here, only the set will appear. You come back again to show, and you invert show. And now you will have a clean outliner. Okay, uh, that will be only saved uh, on your scene. So if you work on something else than Envit, uh, you will keep back your, your set automatically. So yes, a little tips uh, for you. Now take a look at a more complex asset uh, with two mesh and two shader. Um, yes, here as you can see my tree is in one group with leaf and trunk and each associated shader. Um, the pivot point is on the center and on the center of the group. Uh, don't really care about your pivot group because um, Envit will automatically set it at the center and the base of your asset. Okay. Uh, to load uh, this tree, you can select both or select uh, the group here. Uh, be careful if you have too much uh, group like that, uh, that should not work. Be careful to select at least the two mesh or the parent groups. Okay, so I select here, call that tree, and hit enter. You can also hit enter, you don't need to click on create. The keyboard enter uh, will work too. Okay, uh, first thing you will notice is uh, if you have two shader, uh, you will have no feedback in the viewport. Okay, it's a little limitation, but everything will work correctly. Uh, you can hit render and that will work. As you see, Envit uh, combine and do all the jobs for you, set the pivot at the root, everything is, uh, is do for you and it's working. Uh, about shader, let's open Hypershade here and deploy my graph. You can see how it's set. In fact, you have your two shader in one shader with a an, mask uh, Envid create for you. So you can still uh, deal and plug map and everything on your shader here. Okay, I think it's uh, pretty all for assets. One more time, if uh, you have a problem or a bug, uh, feel free to ask any question and uh, anything on the Discord. If you encroach some problem with Envit or asset creation, uh, go to the Discord on script Envit. And when you post, um, the most precise your question is, uh, the quicker and the precise your the answer will be. Okay, so if you can uh, make a video and even uh, better, go to Windows General and open the script editor. Okay, here uh, you can only clean this. Okay, you open it, you record a video, and this way uh, you post on the Discord, and this way that will be perfect for me uh, to give you feedback and answer. 